You are listening to Anisua Works. The bromance between Caleb and I began in a noisy classroom 12 years ago. I was a new student and as fate would have it, we got paired as sitting mates. We bonded over Ninja Turtles and our love for sweets. Six years down the road, we were sitting in a huge examination hall, separated by our surnames, gearing up to take on the dreaded end of secondary school exam. I could see Caleb's ugly head several rows ahead of me the entire examination week, and strangely, it was a source of comfort when I got stuck. Like a dream, the day of our final paper rolled by. The excitement was contagious when we trooped out of the exam hall and into the crowd of cheering continuing students who taught talcum on us as a sign of victory. Most of us were excited we would never have to see the senior housemaster again, but the real joy came from knowing we had about five months of leisure before university began. Caleb and I both did well in the exam and qualified for our dream university. Caleb would pursue a degree in engineering and I would work towards one in architecture. We did everything in our power to ensure we were roommates. The first semester was uneventful, yet eventful. We experienced adulthood and independence, were exposed to partying and a wide array of social vices. Caleb and I were similar in several ways, one of the main reasons our friendship was so quick to form and lasted so long. We coexisted in our two-in-a-room ghetto for a year and a half without an air of disagreement. When the first semester of our second year began, Caleb and I experienced drastic changes in our personal lives. I broke up with my girlfriend of three years from high school and Caleb started seeing a new girl. My ex decided long distance wasn't going to work for her and I'm sure, although she denies it, that she had found someone else. It was an awkward situation to find myself in. I had to be happy for my boy, but the ache in my chest made it so hard. Seeking to cheer me up, Caleb suggested our mutual friend Abigail join us for a drink and to meet his girl. Since I would not be a third wheel, I agreed. When we got to meet Clarice, Caleb's new bae, the awkward grew. When he mentioned her name, everything else was a blur. It was as though everyone else in the room faded away and when she shook my hand, I had trouble letting go. I realized I had a massive crush on Clarice which of course made me very nervous. That dinner was torture for me. There she sat, stunning pale brown eyes, full cheeks and lips, and wearing a sheer dress through which I could see a little. I had trouble not staring at her. Perhaps Caleb did not notice me gushing over his girl because he was busy doing the same thing, but Abigail certainly did. At the end of the night, The couple said goodbye to us and walked off towards Clarice's room. I watched them go for a while before Abigail spoke. You're a whore, she said with a straight face. I swirled to face her. What? I asked in shock. Jordan, you literally drooled over her the whole night, Abigail said. She's a nice girl, that's all, I said with a wry laugh. Abigail crossed her arms and stared me down for a while. Don't do anything stupid, she warned. In days that followed, I allowed those words to replay my head whenever I was faced with temptation and I also avoided being alone with Clarice when she came to our room. On nights she would lay in his bed reading a book with her glasses on, or times when she would clean up after us in her yoga pants, I would leave the room and go hang out next door. One afternoon, Clarice came over to cook jollof for us. Caleb was away at class and as usual, I began to prepare to leave. Clarice noticed. Why do you always leave when I come here? She asked. Don't you like me or something? I chuckled. No, ma'am. I've got some things to attend to. I feel like that's not true. You're avoiding me for some reason, she insisted. I'm not, I exclaimed. Then stay, Clarice said, staring me dead in the eye. I swallowed hard, but shrugged like I didn't mind. Heaven knows I did though. That day, she wore yoga pants and her curves were on blast. I followed her with my gaze as she walked into the washroom. She caught me. I was so embarrassed I left the room anyway and did not return till I saw her walk into her room. I was afraid she might tell Caleb or confront me herself or at least cease to speak with me, 
but none of that happened. A few days after that incident, she was alone with me in our room again. I sighed and started to leave. Where is he going? She asked. I have a class, I said, trying to avoid eye contact. Are you studying for a degree in lying or in terrible lying? She asked. I didn't know what to say. My cousin is Anthony Dia. You know him, right? She asked. I nodded. That's my cousin. He's in your class and right now he's in my room eating my food because he has a free day. How come you have a class? She asked with that heart grabbing smile on her face. I chuckled nervously once again. Beats of sweat had started to form on my forehead and I wondered what to say to her next. I lied. I whispered as I sat back down on my bed. I don't have a class today. So what's the matter? Don't you like me? She asked as she sat beside me on my bed. I could feel my heart racing and my lips quiver. I wanted to tell her how I felt, but my moral compass was strongly pointing to don't do it, bro. I however felt like I needed to and be free. Clarice, I'm attracted to you in every way you can imagine. You're so beautiful. I love your body, your eyes, the way you speak, your lips, but you're my man's girl, so I held my hands up in indication that I will not go there. Clarice didn't say a word. She grabbed her phone off Caleb's bed and ringed him. I almost peed my pants. I was sure she was about to snitch on me and it made me queasy. When Caleb picked up, she asked him how he was and whether he was coming back soon. Caleb let her know he would be at least another two hours. When she hung up the phone, Clarice set it down and walked over to my bed. Your friend wouldn't be here for another two hours, she said as she put her braids in a ponytail. I froze in position as she took off her shirt and bra in one fell swoop. My jaw dropped at the sight of her bosom and the blood rushed from the head on my neck to my other head in 0.5 seconds. Her breasts were larger than I had imagined. Her skin was fair and clear and she smelled like what I imagine a fairy does. It took everything in me to get up to my feet and tell her to put her shirt back on. As though I were a little fly, she flicked me onto the bed and I stayed there like it were a fly trap. She sensually climbed on top of me, her breast inches away from my skin. I knew then I had lost the fight. Whatever thoughts of Caleb still lingered went out the door when she kissed me. I kissed her back and grabbed her breast as she nibbled on my ear. She gave me goosebumps. I see the way you look at me, Jordan. Don't hold back, she whispered in my ear. She helped me take off my shirt before she got to kissing me all over my torso. Her braids brushed against my skin and sent shivers down my spine. I didn't like feeling like her bitch and so I got on top. Mmm, I like a man who takes charge, she growled. I kissed her all over her neck, breast and tummy. She smelled so damn good, a complete turn on for me. I was so hard and horny but I knew better than to expect any waist down action. I stopped kissing Clarice and rolled over beside her. My dick was poking out through my sweatpants and my breathing was labored. I was an absolute mess. Why did you stop? Clarice asked, reaching for the string holding my pants up. If I thought I was surprised before, I was surprised now. Just look at that. Were you seriously going to let all that go to waste? Clarice asked, staring lustfully at my nether regions. She whipped out my dick and gave me some of the best head I've ever had. Thank goodness I was lying in bed. She made my knees weak from pleasure. At this point, I was so turned on, I felt like I was in a sauna because of the sweat pouring out of my forehead. I pulled her onto me. Her yoga pants were skin tight and it felt like she wore nothing as she grinded against my groin. I reached for her waistband and tried to pull her pants down. It was impossible to get them all the way off in that position and so Clarice stood up and took them off. Now she stood before me, stark naked. My heart was not racing any less when she resumed position on top. As she sat down, she slid me inside her. 
My breath was taken away and her fingernails dug into my skin. She moved up and down slowly, her gaze never leaving mine. All I could think about was how beautiful her body was and how warm and wet she was. I tried to fuck her back, but I quickly realized I would come too soon if I did and relaxed like a king. It was a sight fit for an emperor, a gorgeous girl taking control and riding the daylight out of me. I kept one hand around her waist and the other was dedicated to her breasts. The whole experience was heightened by her moans and her facial expression. I don't think I've ever seen a person so sensual as Clarice. I could tell she was near an orgasm when she began to grind harder and faster on me, which put me in a whole mood of my own. I got the feeling I was about to experience something I had only read about in novels, coming at the same time as one's partner. She moaned my name over and over again as she grinded on me and finally let out a sigh of satisfaction as she came. My heart dropped the second I came to my senses and I realized I had come inside her. Reality slapped me one more time, reminding me that her was my best friend's girlfriend. Clarice stood up and immediately picked up on my little accident. I'm sorry, I said. I'll get you a drug tonight. She laughed. I can take care of myself, she said with a wink, disappearing into the bathroom. A weird feeling swept over me. It was regret and shame. I felt the weight of it build up in my chest and a darkness inched towards my heart. I snapped out of it immediately because I knew if I allowed guilt to dictate the days ahead for me, I would be a miserable man. I got up and ripped the sheets off my bed and laid fresh sheets on. The process was symbolic for me because as I tossed the used sheets in the trash and shut the lid, the memory of my mistake went with it. In the weeks that followed, I struggled to be the friend Caleb knew and deserved. I could not look him in the eye and it was very obvious things were different between us. There have been countless times I have tried to come clean to Caleb but could not find the moral courage to do so. I moved out of the room the next semester out of pure shame and guilt. Everything seemed fine with Clarice, however. She never acted weird, but a few times when we were alone, she tried to come on to me. But that was a mistake I would rather die than repeat. It was just not worth it. Caleb and Clarice broke up barely six months after the incident, and it wasn't only then I had the guts to tell my friend the truth. His reaction was not what I expected. I know, bro, he said. I figured it out the very next day, just do your demeanor. You forget I am your best friend. Did he say am? I felt a faint glimmer of hope. Jordan, she's a slut. She was having sex with Rodney, Selim, and Tuff the entire time she was with me. Those boys don't even care, but I know you felt remorse. I wanted you to forgive yourself, then I'd forgive you, and we can continue being friends. I cried. I felt so lucky to have a mature friend with so much sense and compassion. I also felt the burning urge to regain his trust, and that has been my aim since we got back together as friends. I wouldn't blame him if he died not trusting me, but I will try till the day I die to regain that trust.